This is a poem called The Lowing. Uh, it's kind of like it's in five parts. It's kind of like it's in ten parts. It's kind of like it's in two parts. Uh, it's in two voices. Um, and it's weird. And it's about... Uh, I, I, this thing started happening to me in New York where I started having these really vivid memories from when I was a little boy. Um, I think it had to do with the fact that I recognized that my childhood was never coming back and was like having episodes about it. Um, <laughs> and so as a result... Um, this is one of the poems that came out of that, and I've never read it to anyone. So. This is scary. It's called The Lowing. Does anyone know what lowing is? Like a cow? Yes. Like a cow. Okay. I was a boy. My body had a woman's voice. I ate grass because it tasted good. The kids up the block called me names. There was a thunderstorm. My sister and I sat in a blue recycling bin like a boat floated down the street, kind of. There is another boy inside of me. He is wearing a red shirt. When I go to sleep, sometimes we run together in the empty lot behind my house. His body is like mine, only more bones. He showed me in the woods near the sewer main. He says we can be brothers. I don't want a brother, really. I already have one, a door slamming shut. His friends are loud and they are mean. They smell like bad water. I was a child. Mother taught art at my school. Her purse was so big I could almost fit inside. She was so pretty and so nice and everybody loved her. All the kids at school were sad when we moved away. Not as sad as me. We lived in a big house in the middle of a field. There was so much land that you could get lost in it. Sometimes I did. Ever since we moved, I've started having dreams. The boy in the field, he knows where all the animals live. He knows their names. He wants me to come find him when I am awake, but I don't know how. I don't want to go to school. I know the boy isn't there. I found a thistle plant in the center of a pasture. I cut my hands twisting off a purple flower for my mother. She still has it somewhere, I think, pressed inside a book. I'd like to think I found my sorrow like this, that I picked it up somewhere. Where we live, there are lots of cows. Sometimes Mom and I call out to them, Hello, my little hamburgers! Mom is funny. <laughs> I still like the cows, even if they're food instead of pets. They have sweet faces. They have shiny eyes. I was a boy with another boy inside. I wasn't shy. I didn't like the other kids because they were dumb. <laughs> <laughs> they thought it was so magical to ride a horse. I wanted to be a horse. <laughs> I wanted to be a grown-up. Anything but a little boy. I wrote stories all the time about the place where all the animals could talk. A handsome prince who helped me fight the witches made of fire. Mommy kept them all until she lost them. I told the boy to go away. He makes me sad to see him. We can't touch. He says he's my brother, but I know that he's not real. I don't have a brother. Not one that makes me feel warm all over. I was a boy with another boy inside. Now I'm me. The boy inside is wild now. He chases me with teeth. He says it's my fault that he is cruel and sad, that I'm not a good place to live. He says he wants to leave. I write a hundred boats for him. I sing a hundred paths to other places, but he won't go. I think that he's lying. I think that he likes it here. I think he wants to stay. Mom says... There's a sound a cow makes when she's all alone. It's different than mooing. It sounds like a ship's whistle. It's not a sound that boys can make, even if they try. Uh, so this is my last poem. I wrote it in Rome. Uh, the boy I was in Rome with was really sexy. Uh, and we drank a lot of cheap wine. And I had sort of weird flashbacks because of it. Anyway, um, so this is called Sacrament. 
So here's the thing about a bunch of teenagers praying in the basement of a church. Sweeter than the watered-down grape juice fanned out like a peacock's tail against the tongue. Or even the torn feathers of the bread passed solemnly from faithful hand to faithful hand. There's another taste which does not leave. Even when I'm naked with you in the bed of our hotel room, soaking the stale corners of our toast in four dollar Merlot, they are still here. Aaron with the wine-stained birthmark asking me through tears if I think we will recognize our friends in heaven. Bad teeth bully Curtis with the untrimmed beard who gathers me to his beginnings of a beer gut saying, Oh, I've done you so much wrong. When I hold you now, your bird-thin body underneath the sheets, I remember Nathan, whom I loved. How frail he seemed inside his night blue t-shirt. How surprised I was to be allowed to run my palms across the bones of his most sacred back as we embraced each other in Christ's love after communion. How I imagined God might be there, just for a second, creating all the miracles of touch, before he pulled away. 